Pop, The Invention of Bubblegum by Megan McCarthy On a small street in Philadelphia in the 1920s, there was a factory owned by the Fleer family. Inside the factory, lots of gum and candy were made. Working upstairs was a young accountant named Walter Demir. His job was to add numbers and balance budgets. He knew lots about math, but not much about bubblegum. There wasn't enough space in the building, so a new experimental laboratory was moved into the office next to Walter's. In came lots of beakers and pots and tubes. What could be going on? The big secret was that the company was trying to make a new kind of gum. Chewing gum had already been around for centuries. Men in top hats and women in puffy dresses chewed gum for fun and to cure things like stomach aches. The ancient Greeks chewed the sap of the mystique tree. And American Indians introduced early settlers to spruce tree resin, a sticky substance that could be chewed. Ho hum, gum wasn't that exciting. But what if gum chewers could blow bubbles? Now that would be something. A world full of bubble gum blowers. Every day, Walter watched what went on inside the laboratory. There wasn't much progress. One day, his boss gestured toward one of the kettles containing a gum experiment and said, Watch that, will you? After a while, I was not only watching it, I was doing it, Walter said. He added a little bit of this and a bit of that, but still nothing. Perhaps making a new gum wasn't possible after all. And soon, Walter's boss had given up. But Walter hadn't. He spent months playing with different mixtures. Finally, something was happening. Bubbles. Big, glorious bubbles. The mixture needed flavor, so Walter added a little bit of cinnamon, a dash of peppermint, a drop of vanilla. Could this bubbling batch be bubblegum? Walter put a wad in his mouth and began to chew. When the time was right, he blew a magnificent bubble. I had it, Walter said. Excitedly, he passed out the mixture for his co-workers to try. We were blowing bubbles and prancing all over the place. Sadly, the next day, the mixture was as hard as a rock. It wouldn't blow a bubble worth a darn. But Walter didn't give up. Back to work he went. After many more months of adding this and that, top secret ingredients he would never share, Walter found what he was looking for. It bubbled and popped. Could this batch finally be bubblegum? To finish off his grand creation, he needed some color. Pink coloring was the only one I had at hand, said the inventor, so in it went. A batch was cut into pieces and five pounds of it was brought to a local mom and pop store. It was the day after Christmas and the kids who came into the store got the present of a lifetime. They were the first people in the world to try a bubble gun that worked. That day, Walter gave lessons on how to blow bubbles. Everyone loved bubble gum. When the kids discovered what it could do, it sold out that afternoon, Walter said. Walter's double bubble was such a success that the Fleer Corporation made truckloads of delicious bubble gum. It was delivered to small stores and big stores alike. After being promoted to vice president and then later retiring from Fleer, Walter enjoyed the rest of his life in a relaxed manner. He was known to ride around on a giant tricycle and liked to invite the neighborhood kids over for, what else, gum blowing contests. Walter Demir never got rich from his invention, but he didn't seem to mind. I've done something with my life, he said. I've made kids happy around the world. The End